Today on Adventures in Faith with Jerry Savell. It is not over, folks. It is not over. There is a way. His name is Jesus. And I believe when you get back on your faith and determine that you're going to trust God, then the way is about to show up at your house. Hallelujah. Hello, everyone. Thank you once again for joining our broadcast and audience in the studio today. Thank you for being here. Last week, we began a study on From Devastation to Restoration. We're continuing that today, and we'll also be talking about this for the next couple of weeks as well. So make your plans to join with us. From Devastation to Restoration, Satan is out to destroy every life he possibly can. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's his goal. That's what consumes him 24 hours a day, is how he can bring destruction into your life. As I said on last week's broadcast, settle it in your heart once and for all that God is not behind the devastation. God didn't cause it. God didn't create it. It's not his plan for your life. He does have a plan. Even when Satan comes to destroy, God has a plan, and that is to turn it all around, to turn your captivity The Bible is full of stories of how that once Satan's people, or God's people rather, were attacked by the adversary, their adversary, in our case it's Satan, but when they were attacked by their adversaries, their enemies, if they would obey God, God always turned their captivity. And he still does it today. Now our adversary is not the Philistines, our adversary is the devil but he acts just like him, Philistines. You know, they're always trying to get God's people. So uh, you need to understand that God is not behind the attack, but he is behind the restoration. He is the one who will not only turn your captivity, but restore to you everything the adversary has stolen while you are going through that challenge in your life. Now, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 30 once again. We read this on last week's broadcast beginning in verse 2, and thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God. I I can't help but stop there once again and encourage you, if the trouble that you're going through has caused you to drift away from God, that's the biggest mistake you'll ever make. Don't run from God when you're in trouble. Run to God. You know, it's amazing how when Christians uh, come under attack and they're experiencing adversity in their life, One of the first things they do, if they're not strong Christians, I'm talking about if they're not mature in the Lord, one of the first things they do is start drifting away from God, staying out of church, staying away from other believers, get out of the Word of God. See, that is Satan's plan. He's got you right where he wants you if you do that. You see, uh, here it says, if you will return to God, And then it goes on to say, and be obedient to his word. Then God promises that he will turn your captivity. Now, don't you want your captivity turned? Don't you want this situation you're going through? Don't you want to overcome it? Don't you want to be victorious? Well, you're not going to be that way as long as you're running from God. Get back in church where you belong. Get back in the Word where you belong. Get back in fellowship with God. Don't let the devil talk you out of your relationship with God. If you you walk away from God, then you don't have the supernatural working in your life. So don't do that. Return to God. Do it. Return to God, however you have to do it. If you have to get on your knees right now and repent and say, God, I'm sorry that I allowed the devil to deceive me, but I am not going to allow him to do it anymore, and I'm returning to you. And you just begin to trust in him and lean not to your own understanding. Go to the word, find out what the word says, begin to decree it out of your mouth, make your thoughts line up with it, and God is going to turn that situation around. I know he will because I've had him do it for me. I can't tell you how many times. And he's no respecter of persons. So once again, return to God. Return unto the Lord and trust him with all your heart. Walk in his ways. Be obedient to his word. 
and he promises that he will turn your captivity. He says he'll have compassion upon you and he will turn your captivity. But then verse nine also says that he will not only turn the captivity, he'll stop the enemy's attack, but he'll also restore to you everything that was taken from you while the attack was taking place. That's good news, isn't it? That's a great promise. Praise God. I love how the Amplified says, he will restore your fortunes. Everything that was taken from you, God will restore it. The W. Vines defines the word restore as to give back, to make amends, and to furnish completely. That's what W. Vines says. God is in the business of restoring. But I've learned over the years that when God restores, he does not bring you back to original condition. In other words, if the devil stole a thousand dollars from you, God doesn't pay you back a thousand dollars or make the devil pay you back a thousand. In fact, when God restores, there's evidence in the Bible that minimum restoration with God is twice fold. He'll double what the devil took from you. Praise God. Isn't that exciting? He'll double what the devil took from you. In Proverbs, and we'll get to it in a moment, it says that it's possible that you could experience a sevenfold restoration. You know, that sounds pretty good to me. But you're not going to experience that if you stay down in the dumps and you keep, you know, staying depressed and keep talking negative all day about what you're going through. No, that's not returning to the Lord. That's returning to what the devil wants you to do. And you've got to resist him and make up your mind that he is not in control here. He doesn't have the final say. So you go to the word of God and you tell the devil, no, God promised me that if I will return to him and if I will be obedient to his word, then he will not only turn my captivity, he will stop this attack in my life, but he will restore to me everything that's been stolen. And I'm expecting, you need to say this, I'm expecting no less than twice fold. Hallelujah. Amen. No less than twice fold. Praise God. And if you got the faith to do it, go on for that sevenfold. Praise God. I've done that many times. In fact, I'll give you some examples of it a little later. Now let's go to the book of Job for a moment. Job chapter one, Job chapter one, a great uh, illustration of how God can turn captivity and how that God will restore everything that has been stolen. In Job chapter one, beginning in verse six, well, let's, I'll tell you what, let's back up to verse one and get that in here first. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and he shewed evil. So this is a man that is pleasing to God. He's walking upright in integrity. He's a righteous man. And notice in verse six, it says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, have, ha, hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Now notice, even the devil recognized that, that Job's success, Job's wealth, Job's assets were a result of God's presence in his life and God working for him. Notice the devil even said to God, you're the one that built that hedge around him. You're the one that has blessed his house. You're the one that's, that's blessed everything he's done. But then notice Satan goes on to say, but put forth, verse 11, put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. Now, what is Satan saying? He's saying, you're the one that has blessed this man. You're the one that made him a wealthy man. You're the one that's blessed his house, his household. But if you were to take back everything you've given him, if you were to strike your hand against him, he will curse you to your face. Now, apparently Satan didn't know Job as well as he thought he did. 
He, he thought if God does this, then, then Job would turn his back on God. And that's what this was all about. You need to understand that. When you are under attack, it's Satan trying to get you to turn your back on God. That's what this attack was about. He's trying to get Job to turn his back on God. But notice, God said he would not do it. He would not come against Job. He wouldn't take back everything he blessed him with. And he said he gave Satan the power to tempt Job, but he said, you'll not take his life. And so Job went about destroying everything. Uh, or Satan went about destroying everything Job had. He, he caused havoc and, 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 and was destroying everything that God had blessed him with. But notice, God wouldn't do it. And that's important for you to understand that God is not the one who is attacking you. God is not the one who's stealing from you. God is not the one who's crushing you. God is not the one who's keeping you from succeeding. God is for you, not against you. But you do have an adversary. His name is Satan, the same devil that showed up in the book of Job. Now, from that moment, I mean, every time Job turned around, there was some other crisis. Now, a lot of people read the book of Job, and they think those 42 chapters covered Job's lifetime, but it does not. If you read it and you study it, you will find out, and if you read from some theologians, you will find out that this 42 chapters in the book of Job only covered between nine and 12 months of that man's life. In other words, this is, this is what happened to him within one year. Right. Now, it's the worst year you've ever read about. <laughs> you think you had a bad year? Read this. <laughs> oh, you just don't know what kind of year I've had. No, read Job. This is the worst year recorded in human history. And here's the good news. Even though Satan launched major attacks against Job for the span of one year, he could not get the man to turn his back on God. Amen. And you've never gone through everything Job's been through. Amen. And if Job wouldn't turn his back on God with all he went through, then you shouldn't either. Amen. 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 And the good news is when God got through to Job that he needed to get rid of all the negative voices in his life, quit listening to all these people and begin to get back on his faith then the Bible says in Job chapter 42, turn there with me. I don't want you to think I'm making this up. I want you to see it for yourself. In Job chapter 42, when Job got back on his faith, the Bible says in verse 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. If you'll go back and read chapter one, it'll give a list of Job's assets before the attack came. And then if you'll read chapter 42, it'll read his assets after God turned his captivity and restored him. And you'll find out it's exactly twice fold. God restored to Job twice everything Satan had stolen from him. And I want you to know God is still in the restoration business today. No matter what has happened in your life, no matter how devastated it may seem at this moment, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how difficult it is to get up every day and face the world, I want you to know if you will get on your faith, if you'll get back to trusting God and his word and determine you're not going to listen to the lies of the devil, it is not over, folks. It is not over. There is a way. His name is Jesus. And I believe when you get back on your faith and determine that you're going to trust God, then the way is about to show up at your house. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's going to turn your captivity and he's going to restore and he'll do it as much as twice fold if you'll dare believe for it. Can you say amen? Praise amen. God. Amen. Can somebody give the Lord a shout in here today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, once again, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 9, the Amplified Bible says, and the Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in every work of your hand. Abundantly prosperous. That means that Satan thought he had you, but God says it's not over because I haven't had my say yet. And when I have my say, I'm going to make you abundantly prosperous. In um, Psalm 56, verses 1 through 9, 
The Amplified Bible says, What time I am afraid, I will have confidence in and put my trust and reliance in you, God. By the help of God, I will praise his word. On God, I will lean, I will rely, and I will confidently put my trust. I will not fear. Then shall my enemies turn back in the day that I cry out, this I know, for God is for me. Notice how positive the psalmist got once he said, I'm going to put my trust in God. I'm going to rely on him. I'm going to put my confidence in him. My mind can't figure out how God can turn this around. I don't know how he can do it in my own understanding, but I'm not leading to my own understanding. I'm trusting God and I'm trusting his word. And then, then he said, and I know my enemies will turn back. How do I know? Because God is for me. Hallelujah. Amen. See, that's what you need to do. Even though you might have got up this morning feeling depressed, feeling low, feeling crushed, and feeling like there's no way, but you turned on that television and there I was, hallelujah, <laughs> talking to you about how God can restore you. And I hope that your confidence is being restored, your courage is being restored, and you're inspired and you're energized and you're going to get back on your faith and you're going to tell the devil, you've had your way long enough, no more. You're not in authority here. Right. This is me and and God, God's on my side. He's for me, not against me. And in the name of Jesus, it's settled once and for all in my heart. I'm going to come out of this. God's going to turn my captivity. He's going to restore everything you stole. So you're done, devil. Time's up. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how you have to be. And you don't do it just because you're watching the television program and I'm asking you to do it. After the program goes off, you are on your own, except... God's with you, praise God, and you're going to have to become your own best cheerleader. Amen. Just take yourself in front of the mirror and point at yourself in that mirror and tell yourself, call your name out and say, you are not going to lay down and accept this anymore. You're not going to be defeated. You're not going to be overcome. You're not going to be the victim. You're going to be the victor because God's on your side. And if God's on your side, no one can successfully be against you. Praise God. You have to talk to yourself like that from time to time. Amen. Praise God. So do it. And if you have to do it all day, do it all day. It's worth it because what you're doing, you're giving God something to work with. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. Now, if you read Psalm 80, verses 3, verse 7, and verse 19, the Amplified Bible, three different times in this one psalm, the psalmist cries out, restore us again. Restore us again. That means no matter how many times God has restored you in the past, he can do it again. Hallelujah. Amen. I've had restoration take place in my life numerous times. And I believe, praise God, if I needed it today, my God is a faithful God and he would restore me again. So I wanted to point that out because it does, I don't want you to get the idea that you got one chance for restoration. He can restore you again and again and again and again. He's in the business of restoring his people. Now let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. Beginning in verse 18, Hear ye deaf, look ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? In other words, what he's saying, I sent my prophets and my prophets are to be my, uh, my mouthpiece to you. The only problem is I have something I want to say to you, but my prophets are spiritually blind and they're sp spiritually deaf. They're not seeing what I want to do. They're not hearing what I want to do. And it says as a result of this, verse 22 says, the people are robbed and spoiled. In other words, when you're not hearing the word of God, Satan will rob from you. He will take from you. He will hold you in captivity. And so God is saying, I need my servants to be spiritually alert so that they can speak what I want to speak. And then notice here, he says in verse 22, but this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in hoes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth for a spoil and none saith restore. So apparently what God was wanting to do for this people is to bring restoration to them. 
But the problem was his prophets were spiritually insensitive and they weren't hearing what God was saying. And so they weren't saying to the people, God wants to restore. God wants to restore. And as a result of that, they remained robbed and spoiled. Well, let me be your prophet today. Let me be God's mouthpiece to you today. And here's what God is saying to you. I want to bring restoration to your life. God wants to restore your life. No matter how devastated it might be, God wants to restore. You know, if I, if I only had one verse that proved that God's in the restoration business, that should be sufficient. But I've given you more than one verse. And, and, and you should uh, have settled it by now that God wants to restore your life. Amen. Now, notice he says, none saith restore. Not only am I saying restore to you, but you need to be saying it. You need to be saying as you walk around your house, as you go from uh, work and back in your automobile or however you go to work, you need to be saying, God is turning my captivity. God is restoring my life. Right. Say it. God is turning my captivity. God is restoring my life. Notice God needs something to work with. And you're giving him that something when you speak his word. God wants to restore. But as long as you're talking doom and gloom, he can't bring restoration. But if you'll begin to speak all day long, if necessary, I keep saying that because sometimes it is necessary just to shut the devil up. You know, I've had times when I shut him up, but he came right back and I had to say it again and say it again and say it again. Sometimes he'd wake me up in the middle of the night saying, no way, no way. And I'd get up and grab my Bible and begin to walk the floors and speak the word until he shut up. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So you begin saying, God is turning my captivity and God is restoring my life. Hallelujah. And you keep declaring it. And if anybody says anything different, you just turn a deaf ear to it. And if you don't feel like saying it in front of them, fine, just walk off and you say out loud, God is turning my captivity and God is restoring my life. But sometimes you need to tell the people that are talking negative to you so you can shut them up. Just tell them <laughs> if that's the way you want to talk, fine, but I'm not listening to that. I'm saying what the word says and God is turning my captivity and God is restoring my life. Hallelujah. Amen. They'll either join with you or they'll leave. Either way you win. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So notice once again, God wanted to restore, but he needed somebody giving voice to it. God wants to restore, but he needs you giving voice to it. Praise God. Can you say amen? Amen. Psalm 66 and verse 12. Oh, this is exciting. Turn there with me. Psalm 66 and verse 12. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. I like to say it this way. We've been through the fire and we've been through the mud, but now it's our turn to win. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He said, we've been through the fire. We went through the water. This is talking about the children of Israel, all that they went through while they were in bondage to Egypt. But then he said, but you turned all that around and you brought us out into our wealthy place. You know what that tells me? That whatever you're going through right now, on the other side of it is a wealthy place. Wow. Whatever you're going through right now, on the other side of it is victory. On the other side of it, is abundance. On the other side of it is healing and deliverance and freedom. You see, you got to look through the eye of faith while you're going through all this trouble. Don't magnify the trouble. Look beyond that and know on the other side of it, there's a place called wealthy, a wealthy place, a, a victory place, praise God. And that's where God wants to take you. Are you convinced yet? I want to encourage you, let the word of God be final authority. God wants to turn your captivity and God wants to restore your life. What's this announcement? I'll be back in just a few moments. 
You can go from devastation to restoration. Has your life had setbacks? Has Satan attacked your marriage, your family, your health, or your finances? In the book, From Devastation to Restoration, Jerry Savelle teaches that regardless of the pressure you may feel, now is not the time to give up. It's the time to get fed up. March into the enemy's camp and take back what's yours. You can get a revelation of God's great plans for your life. He wants your life to be better, improved, increased, and multiplied. In the three CD teaching series, How to Get Back Everything Satan Has Stolen From You, you can learn the scriptural keys to recover what the thief has stolen. God is ready for you to storm into the devil's camp and reclaim what is rightfully yours. Don't wait. Request the restoration package, including From Devastation to Restoration and How to Get Back Everything Satan Has Stolen From You today. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org. Don't get discouraged. You are a candidate for God's restoration. Now, let me remind you, if you are going to experience restoration in your life and a major turnaround and a breakthrough, number one, you're going to have to change what's in your mind. Number two, change what's in your mouth. You're not going to experience these things if you keep thinking negative and you keep talking negative. You're going to have to replace what's in your mind with the Word of God, replace what's in your mouth with the Word of God. So here's what I want you to get in the habit of saying. God is turning my captivity and God is restoring my life. See, the Bible says in Romans chapter 4, verse 17, that we are to call things that are not as though they were. So that's what you're doing. You're speaking the Word of God over your situation. So begin to think and begin to say, God is turning my captivity, and God is restoring my life. Now, once again, I want to encourage you to order the resources that we're making available to you this week. My book entitled From Devastation to Restoration, it covers everything that we've been talking about on today's broadcast, last week's broadcast, and even more. And then the three CDs entitled How to Get Back Everything Satan Has Stolen From You. I'm telling you, whatever you pay for this special offer, these three CDs are worth it alone. Because a lot of times people have things stolen from them, and they don't know that they're entitled to have it restored. Well, I'll show you in the Word that you do, and I'll lead you in this step-by-step step on how that you can get back everything Satan has stolen from you. The book, From Devastation to Restoration, and the three CDs on how to get back everything Satan has stolen from you. So log on to the website if you'd like to order those, or uh, call the number that's on the screen, or you can write to us. Either way, as soon as we get your order, we'll get it to you just as quickly as we can, and I know that it'll be a life-changing experience for you. I also want to remind you of all the social media that is available to you through Jerry Savelle Ministries, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Also, uh, we live stream every Sunday our Heritage of Faith Christian Center services, no matter if it's me speaking or Pastor Justin Bridges or whoever might be speaking in our service on Sunday morning. It is is being live streamed and you can pick it up at 10 a.m. Central Time. So take advantage of all that. It's here to be a benefit to you and to help you in your spiritual growth. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next week. And remember, your faith will overcome the world.